Okay, in this video, 3.3 .3 examples, part two, it says identify the open intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing. Identify any extrema. So the function we're given here is f of x equals sine of x cosine of x. So I first have to find the derivative and I will need to use the product rule. So the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. So I end up with negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Um, and I need to find out when this function is equal to zero or when it is undefined. Since there's no denominators here, I just need to find out when f prime of x equals zero. So when does cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x equal to zero? Well, in order for me to figure that out, I have to factor this and then set each factor equal to zero. So I have the difference of two squares here. And so then if I set each one equal to zero, I will get cosine x equals negative sine x and I will get cosine x equals to positive sine x here. Now if you use your um, unit circle here, this happens at this point here. S cosine of x is equivalent to sine of x here and here, which those values are um, pi over four, and 5 pi over 4. And I forgot to mention that x is supposed to be between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm only looking at one revolution of the of the unit circle uh, and that's it. And we cannot use negative measurements because that would not be within 0 to 2 pi. I forgot to write this down in the problem. It is in web assigned but it wasn't here in this on this sheet of paper when I copied it down. So then now we need to find when the cosine of x is equal to the opposite sine of sine x. Well, that happens here and here. Cosine and then sine is the opposite sine. So we have that occurring when x is 3 pi over 4 and when x is 7 pi over 4. So here we have a lot of um, numbers to test. So I'm going to make a big number line. Now here's 0 and here's 2 pi. That's the only x values I'm allowed to talk about so I'm not concerned about anything else outside of that. Now I do have some numbers here. I have pi over 4. I have 3 pi over 4. I have 5 pi over 4. And then lastly I have 7 pi over 4. Um, and so I need to test values within each interval. And if it helps, look at your unit circle again. So between 0 and pi over 4, you've got the value pi over 6. Between pi over 6 and 3 pi over 4, I could use pi over 2. Oops. In between those, I would use pi over 2. In between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, I can use pi. Between 5 pi over 4 and 7, pi over 4, I can use 3 pi over 2. And then between 7 pi over 4 and 2 pi, I can use 11 pi over 6. Okay, so those will be my test values. I do have to plug each of these into the derivative. And we're only concerned with the sign, not necessarily the number. Now I will be using the calculator, so I will be finding the exact number, but on paper I'll only be writing the sign because that's all we need. So let's see here, let's program our, cal our derivative. Our derivative is negative um, sine x, oops, negative sine x squared plus cosine 
x squared. Now I just put the sine and cosine in parentheses just so it, the calculator wouldn't confuse with me squaring the, f the trig function versus me squaring the angle. And it is a negative value. Now, oh, I can't pay attention to this because I don't even remember what we plugged in for x last. So let's start with our first one. Pi over 6 stores x. And now we'll plug it in to find out the sign. Ah, so we get positive 1 half. Then pi over 2 store as x. Plug it in. We get a negative value. For pi... we get a positive value. For 3 pi over 2, we get a negative value. And for 11 pi over 6, we get a negative value. So, Is that right? 3 pi over 6? Let me see. Three pi over two, I'm sorry. Yep, that was right. Okay. So then that means Oh, for 11 pi over 6, I get a positive value. That was where I went wrong. Um, so then now let's go ahead and determine the intervals for increasing and decreasing. So this one is increasing, increasing, increasing. This one is decreasing or decreasing. So for the intervals that are increasing, that would be from 0 to pi over 4 from 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 and then lastly from 7 pi over 4 to 2 pi. The intervals that are decreasing are going to be from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 and from 5 pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4. Now, that is half the problem. The rest of the problem says identify any extrema. So here we have to use some logic here. If the function is increasing until it gets to pi over 4 and then is decreasing on the right hand side of pi over 4, then that would create a shape similar to this, which would mean that there's a maximum, a relative maximum at pi over 4, and I'm not sure what the y value is. Now, for 3 pi over 4, it's decreasing on the left of 3 pi over 4, but then increasing on the right-hand side of pi over 4, which means that there would be a relative minimum At 3 pi over 4. Again, I don't know what the y value is. We'll figure those out in a little bit. Now, similarly for 5 pi over 4, it's increasing on the left and then decreasing on the right. So that would be giving us a relative um, maximum. 7 pi over 4 is decreasing on the left and increasing on the right. So it would be yielding a minimum value. And then 2 pi is the end of our interval, so we don't need to do anything further. Now, in order for me to figure these guys out, I plug these numbers into my original function. So sine of x, cosine of x. I'm going to ignore the first value. I don't know what I plugged in last. I think I plugged in 11 pi over 6 last. So we're going to do pi over 4, store x, and then plug that in there. 
and we get one half. Then five pi over four store X, plug it in and we get one half. Then three pi over four store X, and we get negative one half. And then finally, seven pi over four store X, plug it in, and we get negative one half. And so we have found the extrema, the relative extrema, and we have found the intervals of where this function is increasing and decreasing.